Uh, well, thank you everybody for staying here so lately. Uh, it's true, uh, I've been here in Troopers a lot of years. I was in 2010 talking about connection stream parameter pollution in 2011 talking about FOCA. How many of you love FOCA? <laughs> no? If not, you need to run FOCA in your computer. Then in 2012 I've been here talking about terminal application some stuff about hacking Citrix, terminal services with Excel, document and so on. And last year I was talking about IPv6 attacks uh, with Evil Foca, but it's true I wasn't here really. I need to, to do the demo online. That's me speaking here, more or less. And the problem was that Java was updated. At, at some point I was like this with the updated in front of my face. It wasn't very nice for me because I was speaking and everybody was laughing. Ah, the Java is updated. Well, well, this year I'm here uh, and I'm very happy uh, to stay in Troopers because after five years speaking here, I feel like a legend here as a David Hasselhoff legend or something like that because every year I try to make it to to be here is nice. <laughs> well, this year I'm not, I'm not going to talk about uh, hacking. I'm going, I'm, try, I'm going to try to, to talk about how to avoid hacking. Uh, I'm going to talk about a uh, technology that we've been working the last year, more or less, and that's, that technology is large. And that technology is focused on trying to avoid this. Probably most of you, every day, you are reading the news that a lot of security breaches on the internet are pushing out on the network, username and password. A lot of them, every day, over 150 million breaches, Adobe security breach worse than original, and so on. And my favorite is that one. It's the hacking PlayStation network. How many of you are aware about the hacking of PlayStation network? Well, it was amazing because uh, when hackers were able to get into Sony PlayStation Network. Uh, probably you remember all that story with GeoHot and Sony shooing GeoHot because of the PlayStation uh, 3 jailbreak and all that stuff. When uh, Sony was hacked, they published a very nice report on the internet trying to explain what people can do after the hack. And it's, this, is, uh, this is online, you can go and, and read it. And the only thing that people could do at that point let me use soon, is this. It says, to protect against possible identity theft or other financial laws, we encourage you to remain vigilant. And that's all. <laughs> because it's true. Sony cannot do anything more. You are hacked. Your username and password are uh, on the internet, but also your credit card information. Well, you can go and shut down the credit card, but also your personal name, your son name. Probably you can change your name because you prefer another different, I don't know, Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo, whatever. Probably you can change your home because your address is on the internet. Probably you can change your uh, passport number because right now it's on the internet and anyone can use it to, I don't know, ask for a mortgage in a bank or wherever. So the problem with identity theft is that once it happens, you cannot do anything. That's the, the big problem with identity theft. And if we think about that on the internet, we got a lot of problems because probably most of you are unable to recall how many identities do you have on the internet since you connect the first time to the network? How many of you are able to say, okay, I got 37 identities on the internet? How many of you? No one. Incredible, no? And we are in a security conference of hackers, technical people, and even us are unable to say how many digital identities we have on the internet. This is a very, a very big problem. And of course, probably most of you are reusing passwords at some point. Come on, say the truth. How many of you have reused a password any time in your life? When you were young, you smoked pots on the university, <laughs> I don't know. This is a big problem because in the end, we got a lot of digital identities and a lot of uh, security protection that needs to remain and it's a pain in the ass. The, the big problem is when something happened with one of the websites in which we register with one of 
our identities. Then we got a big problem because if someone is able to uh, retrieve the password for another, for one of those sites in which we opened one identity and we are unable to recall that we opened that identity, then someone can get, ac can get access to our digital identity in other web services. I like this place, uh, probably most of you know it, Have I Been Pound? I was checking out it right now and as you can see, they got the database of user and password of Adobe, Snapchat, Gawker, Forbes, uh, Stratfor, well, more or less 161 million of username and password exposed on the internet. How many of you are, sh are sure that no one of your password or no one of your identities could be exposed in any part of the internet? It's very complex to, to say that. Well, there are a lot of kind of people, which I, I love the most, which is the kind of people who has a method to build password. <laughs> How many of you are using a, a method which depends on the uh, URL or depends on the service name or whatever, and you do more or less the same with some specific words? How many of you are doing that? Come on. I used to do it. <laughs> Well, this is very common. Even Dan Kaminsky was doing, was doing that. Dan Kaminsky has, has a method to do that. Probably you remember that in 2010, when Dan Kaminsky was speaking in, in Black Hat, all their personal emails were published on the internet, all their personal uh, direct me messages in Twitter, all their personal Facebook message was published on the internet. At the same time, he was speaking about security in Black Hat. And that was because he has a method, that was his method, fact.gmail, fact.facebook, fact.twitter, and fact.the rest of their digital identities. In the end, having a method is not a good idea. It's not a good idea. And the most dangerous is to have uh, our digital identities protect only by a single and a stupid string of characters. Because password could be guessed, or could, could be uh, stolen, or could be copied by anyone, anyone on the internet. It's very complex <laughs> to be secure that no one need, uh, knows uh, our password. I, I used to receive, uh, as probably most of you, when you are, you are working as a security expert or a hacker or whatever, you, probably you receive emails like me. This is an, an, an email that <coughs> one of the hundreds or hundreds of, of emails that I received just asking me to hack someone. Probably you received that kind of emails too, hands up. How many of you received emails saying, please hack my girlfriend Gmail? No one? Well, I received hundreds of that, <laughs> of them. This is one of them. <laughs> this is one of them. It's in Spanish. It's in Spanish, but let me translate it. The story is that he said uh, something like, Dear Chema, I like you to inform me about a very important subject to me. My girlfriend is on holidays in Cuba with her, with her friends. Is it possible to spy the BlackBerry Messenger? And the, the answer is, why do you need to spy the BlackBerry Messenger of your girlfriend? If your girlfriend is in Cuba with her friends, it's clear. You don't need to spy that. <laughs> That <clears throat> actually, uh, when you when you, when you are when, when I used to receive this kind of email, I, I used to answer with a joke because in the internet there are a lot of Trojans, a lot of backdoors, just focusing still in still password and username, and it's quite nice because some of those uh, Trojans uh, just send the information to a hack website. So if you do the, the right uh, search in Google, you will discover the control panel of the internet with a lot of username and password that have been, stole, have been stolen by those Trojans. And I did this right now a few minutes, just searching for one of the queries that is very common for that kind of malware. And I just was able to to get access to one of these backups on the internet with username and password. Here you can see the username and the password for alaplaya.net or kickeremu.com. 
uh, if you pay attention on the right side, this is the, scr the scroll mini bar. Let's, ca let's do a, an account about the number of digital identities only in this backup. Are you counting? <laughs> well, thousands and thousands. So, <clears throat> and of course, you got Gmail, Gmail, you got Facebook. You got Hotmail, you got, I don't know, whatever you want it, it probably is on the internet. It's very easy to, to find this kind of, of website. So we were thinking about that and we were worried because if you are working in security, probably you feel like, like me, insecure. You are always thinking, I'm going to be the next one to be hacked and all my personal emails are going to be published on the internet. Any of you have been thinking about this? This is my worry. Every night when I get in the bed, I'm thinking, I'm going to be hacked tomorrow. Tomorrow is the day. <coughs> well, we were thinking about that, and we were, we were worried. And Sunday, we decided to think about this. Why my digital identities are up and running 24 hours a day if I'm sleeping? If I'm on holidays in Ibiza or in Mallorca, why in the hell my password, my digital identity is waiting for someone to use my my username and password and get into my digital life. And we were thinking about to, about to create something very easy to manage to switch off the digital identities when I want it. I want to switch off my email, I want to, use, to switch off my online banking and so on. <coughs> so thinking about this, we were analyzing what uh, kind of solution are on the internet just to not protect your digital identity just by a single string of characters. How many of you are using one of these technologies in, in one of your accounts? Okay, very nice. How many of you are using these technologies in more than 10 digital identities? Only one? How many of you have more than 10 digital identities? <laughs> why in the hell? <clears throat> we were thinking, why Almost nobody is using second factor authentication or, or second factor tokens to, to protect digital identities on the internet. And in the end, all of them are more or less a pain in the ass. If you think about that, in all of them you need to type a code anytime you get access to your digital identity. If we are thinking about to, to create a a second factor authentication using SMS, we need to do the deployment, which is a pain in the ass because you need to do an enrollment process for every mobile number and then people, people uh, lost the mobile number and need to create a copy of the SIM card. If not, it's impossible to get access to the digital account. In the end, it's not completely uh, anonymous because there is, uh, there is a connection between the identity and the mobile phone number and there are a lot of tricks to connect from the identity to the mobile number. It's not easy to deploy. This, uh, on the right side, it's in Spanish, but this is the list of countries that can use second factor authentication in Apple. Any of you could read Germany? Not at all, no. But New Zealand, yes. New Zealand could do it. Eh? Oh, it's the first one. It's a good. Okay, but the list is how many? <laughs> Not Germany. It's Alemania. <laughs> it's a different. How many? <laughs> it's true. It's not German. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven countries. Only eleven countries. Uh, let's see. Portugal is not on the list. Denmark is not on the list. Swit Switzerland is not on the list. Sweden is not on the list. <laughs> Probably they don't want Russia on the list. <laughs> Sorry? US. US is on the list. No. Estados Unidos. It's in Spanish. It's a complex language. <laughs> well, if we think about matrix, matrix, matrix is, is an static uh, list of numbers. If we think about hardware tokens, we got the same problem. We need to do an enrollment process. And of course, you need to release a very expensive piece of hardware. And the user need to pick up every morning the car keys, the office keys, the home keys, the mobile number, the badge for the company, and then the hardware token to get access to the digital identity. It's very complex to manage. And in the end, user needs to type a code every time to get access to the digital identity. And people don't like it. 
to typing, don't like typing codes. We were doing a very complex research about what people want. And after months and months of research, we, we get the conclusion that people like having naps. <laughs> it's true. How many of you sleep in the sofa, more or less like that guy? <laughs> With the remote? <laughs> this guy is almost happy. It's almost happy, but not completely happy because the remote is very complex. There are a lot of buttons. When you buy a, a TV, then you need to go to your father, your brother, your family, and show the remote and ask for all the, the buttons. If no one is able to say all the buttons, that design is a bad design. Choose another TV model. <laughs> Do you think he is worried about second factor authentication? He's <laughs> probably about the RSA token. <laughs> well, we were thinking about how to create a technology that this kind of people could love. And we think that the most important is to create thin keys. That, uh, probably you know that keys is keep it Spanish stupid. <laughs> And we realized that in our physical world, we got keys to open doors. But once you, you are inside your, your home, you use a very simple and useful thing in your physical world to help you to be more secure, which is this. How many of you are using something like this in your physical life? Only one? Two? Only two people? Now, even in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> the idea of this is, is quite nice because when you are living in a, in a home, probably five, seven, pers seven people have the keys. But the only one which is inside could block all the keys. That's the kind of thing that the Spanish people do when it's alone at home with the girlfriend and the friends and parents are out. You know what I mean. <laughs> if, you, if your father tried to get into your home, the key is not working, you open the door. Stop. Well, <clears throat> we were thinking about how to create this in the digital life. And we wanted to, to create a wallet to put latch on digital identities. We wanted to create that. Just a wallet in which I could say, I want latch this digital identity. I was, I want this detail identity unlock. Mm -hmm. That's simple. <clears throat> the problem is how to, how to do it without extend the, the surface, without using username, without, without using password. How to create this? Well, the idea is quite simple. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to, to do a quick demo with a website. This is the website. and. Here I had the, the wallet. Can I say the mobile here on the right side? Yeah. Well, this is the wallet, OK? And, I ha and here I have my latches. And I have latches for a lot of digital identities right now. And here is the digital identity I want to use right now, which is a garante. So I'm going to. I'm going, oops. I'm going to switch off the digital identity. I, I just lock the digital account. So if I try to get access with <coughs> username and password, but I'm using a bad password, not the real password, I cannot get access. And I'm, going, I'm not going to receive any alert. If I use the right password, and I try to get access. I cannot get access either, but on the mobile application, as you can see, I receive an alert saying, OK, someone tried to get access to your digital identity. If that was, was you, then unlock the, the latch. If not, contact with your website, change the password, or do whatever you, you think you need to do to be secure. So it's me. I'm going to just open the digital identity and get access with it. 
That's it. That simple. So how is the idea of this technology? How we created this? Well, the idea is quite simple. We got a wallet. We got a, a wallet which is stored in a, in a large server. We are managing this wallet, and in, in that wallet, I have a list of, of latches. In the uh, online side, which is uh, uh, that we are protecting with latches, we only store this unique latch, this data latch, which is a token that connects this online site with this, uh, this wallet. But it's not connecting at all. It's not connecting at all username and password. Because the only one who knows the username and password is this website. We don't know anything about the username and password of this website. The idea is that if someone tries to get access, send the username and password, the online, the online site checks the, checks the username and password because it's the only one who stored the user database, then he reali it realized that there is a latch on this digital identity and then query the status to the latch server and we said it is off, it's locked, then the website is not going to, to allow the access and the user is going to retrieve this, uh, this, uh, this alert. So this is the demo I, I did and the question is how to do this without extend the uh, exposure surface? Without user, with, uh, without manipulating username and password, personal data, and so on. Well, the idea is quite simple. The idea is just to to do something like this. We got the wallet. We are managing a wallet. It's an anonymous. You can be Donald Duck or whatever you want it. Then you connect to your large server, requiring a temporary pairing token. It's just a temporary number. That temporary number is going to be sent to the wallet, and then from the wallet, the user needs to go to the website and type it uh, in any place of the, of the user settings, and then the user with, will send the same temporary token, but with uh, the application ID, which is an identifier but, but, uh, for the whole website. It's not sending username, it's not sending password, it's not, it's not sending any related to the real user. And in the end, the latch server creates the token, which is the latch, and then uh, the website is going to store that in, in the database where, uh, along with the rest of the user data. And of course, the user will have the digital identity to manage uh, all their identities. Well, we integrated uh, this with Shodan. You can go to Shodan and in your personal settings, you can click on security and the only thing you need to do is to type your temporary token. I'm not going to do it with Shodan, but I'm going to, to show you the, the email that John Matherly, which is the, the, the man behind Shodan, sent out about how was to integrate Latch with uh, Shodan. Uh, he did it in one, two, uh, from one to two hours, and in the end, he sent a, a patch for our, our Python support. <laughs> well, one, uh, once we got this uh, side channel, we can do a lot of things. For instance, we can select uh, different operations. For instance, in online banking, uh, we can send, uh, select one operation, and the website can ask for the status of one operation of, uh, of the latch. If I can say at the same time the, the mobile on the right side, I probably could uh, show you. Well, in the end, the idea was uh, is to create a, a wallet that allows users to manage all digital identities in one single point, and developers have a lot of plugins or um, SDKs as open source to manage whatever they wanted. And I'm going to do the demo with an SSH, for instance, to see how this works right now. So can I say here the mobile? OK. I got the wallet here. And the process to put a latch on an, uh, in an identity is like this. I'm going to connect to an SSH. OK. I'm going to use my password. OK. Well, here, here. I got uh, the latch plugin installed in this, in this Linux machine. And the only thing that I need to do to protect 
this account is just click on this button. I receive a temporary pairing code and just say pair s s chase q c i n in. Well, this token lasts only 60 seconds once double uh, okay okay then I got my Linux uh, protect right now I'm going to to say okay I want this uh, lock if I try to get access and I type the real password I'm not going to be it's not the real password Someone hack me. <laughs> hey, is that the real person? Okay, this is the real password. <laughs> and I, I received the alert. If I type the wrong password, nothing happened. Only when the right password is, is typed, then I'm going to receive the alert. <clears throat> so, the idea is that you can use this in, in a lot of scenarios. You don't need to, to use latches uh, with, in, with username and password. Of course, you can do it. But there are a lot of scenarios that have been created with, with latch right now. For instance, you can integrate it with login uh, authentication. You can create a parental control in which the username has the privacy and the parent is managing just the access. Uh, for en environments uh, with four eyes verification, you can give the username and password to one user and the latch is managed by a peer. Uh, in one bank, uh, we created a two case activation in which an asset of the website is managed, is protected by more than one latches. <coughs> And of course, one uh, you got this side channel. You can create, of, you can use also the one-time password, and we use the the side. Uh, we use this as a supervision method for digital identities. And the most important is that in the end, we got a, a mobile application that is more or less a remote that can uh, allow you to do different actions when the latch is locked or the latch is unlocked. So we created, uh, there are a lot of tools right now using this. this. For instance, this is a tool to change the automatically the password uh, with a panic button. So you lock your digital life and change all the password automatically. And we create a, a, a tool to manage your Windows machine just uh, connecting the operations with all the bands that you have in your Windows machine. So I'm going to do the last demo. It's only one minute. Uh, and the idea is that I got here a, a Windows machine. OK, this is a Windows machine. I'm connecting through remote desktop. Uh, here I got my Windows. So for this Windows, my Windows, I create different operations. One of the one is for remote desktop protocol. The second one is for the VNC server, and the third one is for uh, host file. And if someone try to to get access to the VNC that we are doing right now, is just if the event of the authenticated user is created by the VNC server, uh, VNC server we are going to disconnect if the switch is locked. Okay. It's, in this is example, it's reactive. There is, there is a window in which someone can inject some, some command. It depends on you uh, when you want to, to run the script or what kind of script you want to run. For instance, in the host file, we decide not to do anything. But if someone tries to get access and modify the host file, I'm going to receive an alert if I lock my, my host file. And in the case of uh, RDP, we decide to say, OK, if someone, if this event uh, occurs, then log off the, the session. So a very quick demo. I'm going to try to manipulate the host file. As you can see, it's locked. So I'm going to open the host file because I'm a malware. I 
and run this as an administrator then I manipulate this file okay the alert is on the right side as you can see then I'm going to try to connect to the VNC with the password I cannot do it now I want to open my BNC because I want to connect oh connect and I can do it. So in the end, the idea of digital latches, and it, this is the last slide with the code that you are waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of digital latches is that uh, allows you to, to manage your, your digital life with, uh, with a single switch on or switch off uh, and, and, uh, gesture and you can use it in, integrated with your physical world, with biometry, with plugins for Active Directory, with all, almost all frameworks on the internet and if you want to, <coughs> to, to use it in your real life you can download the app, download the SDKs and integrate it where, when the website that you want it to, to use it and play with it and that's all, the second token and the third token <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, hey there, uh, just a, a quick one. Uh, I assume that whatever the website or applications work with, they have to integrate your system. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, what sort of market penetration do you guys have? I mean, what? obviously if no one's using it, then it's difficult to, to adopt it. Well, it, uh, it's true. Uh, we launched this in, in December and right now there are uh, 800 different websites using this and there are plugins for PrestaSoft, for WordPress, for uh, Moodle, Squaremail, uh, Roncube, uh, do you have SDKs for .NET, Java, PHP, so and the most important is that a lot of people are using this and we are, we are not able to say, to say what size are using this technology because you go to the website, open an anonymous account, you say my website integrated with the system and I don't know if you are a, a bank or an intranet or whatever. So that's the, the magic. And uh, to integrate it is only six lines of code. Six lines of code. As you can see, John Matherly did it in one hour. But it's John Matherly, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> no. More questions? So I cannot run my own server, as I understand. It's one centralized box. Well, right now uh, we got the the server, the large server is running in our our uh, is running in the cloud right now, and we provide the API, the standard development kit, and that's all. So the new side of service attack on your machine will essentially mm. resolve. It's true. You can try to do other. You, you can try to do a denial of service attack. We we are using Amazon with the anti denial of service attack and load balancing for different countries and so on. That's but right? now, but the magic the magic uh, of this is that if something happens to us, your system reminds I see this right now because we don't store username password. We don't have any information that allows anyone to get access to your website and on the other hand if someone tried, uh, someone is able to hack your website and still username a password with a SQL injection for instance they cannot use it because the only information that they are going to read from us is a token which is not pointing to any user so they are not able to hack the right user to latch, uh, to unlock the latch it's different when they st uh, steal the telephone number. Let me just rephrase the question. Will there in the future be a version so that I can run my own Ledge server? <laughs> well, right now the server is in our, uh, our cloud. In the future we are going to release a uh, uh, in, in-house in, in appliance that you can use. In the examples that, that you showed, um, the attacker could uh, distinguish between wrong password and... Yeah, exactly. So could I not, as an attacker, 
try password until it works. Yeah. So I it's, know it gets its correct password, and then I continue to use the password until the account is unlocked by the <coughs> user. And <coughs> if you if you are uh, if you are doing a brute force attack and the website allows you to do a brute force attack, then the website has another kind of vulnerability. Yeah, but suppose it's not a brute force attack, but I get the password from some other way, and I just like the some of the databases that you showed earlier, and then I know it's the correct password, and all I have you, to do uh, is wait until the user logs in. Exactly. No. Uh, in, this, in this example, in this scenario, you are waiting until the user get access. The user only need to latch the the lock when the uh, unlock, uh, unlock the latch when it is going to get access, then automatically can uh, switch off. In fact, we got an auto lock option. But the the good point is that uh, we we got an option that allows user to receive alerts when someone get access, even if the if the, if the latch is unlocked. Just a it's a user decision to say, okay, I want to unlock the the latch. And of course, uh, for security reasons. Almost uh, all website has a list of different sessions with different users and in the log uh, settings. More questions? I see uh, you like it. I can see you like it. <laughs> a lot of questions. What happens if, if I lose my smartphone? It's, it's not tied to your smartphone at all. It, you, you go to another smartphone, download the app, get into your wallet, and that's all. It, we are using the, the mobile phone as a side channel, not as an authentication token or something related. Okay, the, the trick is that we, we got a side channel we, that we are managing with an anonymous identity. That's all. More questions? Yeah, it kind of came up before, but uh, the question um, that actually means it's not really two-factor authentication, is no. it? Because I don't really need the phone. Exactly. Yeah. So um, why not like show a notification when someone tr tries to log in and they have to press a button on my phone? That uh, so this would then mean we have real uh, two-factor authentication. I can still manage uh, multiple well. identities. <laughs> Phone, the, the, but uh, in attack, I can not just get my password and wait for me to unlatch my service. Well, we, we created the technology as flexible as possible. The idea is that the website, for security reasons, can say, OK, lock this latch to the user. So the online banking could say, lock this, uh, this uh, latch to the user just for security reasons. So. Uh, one of the implementations that uh, we, we did with uh, one bank, for instance, is okay. After any successful login, I'm going to sw to switch off the latch, just uh, uh, forcing the user next time will get access to uh, unlock uh, as, uh, unlock the latch. This is uh, one example in order to do a real second factor authentication uh, because uh, mm, it's mandatory to to do a, a, a human action any time that you get access. And you got a second factor authentication, but it's not the mobile, mobile phone. The second factor authentication is the account, the anonymous account, which is managing the latch. So if you want to, to, to bypass the second factor authentication with a mobile, you need to, to do a copy of the scene to, to try to steal the mobile phone or whatever. If you want to do the same in this technology, you need to steal the latch wallet but the, the big problem is that you need to know before that which wallet is managing that latches because it's not con really connected because it's only a token which is not pointing at all to any of the wallets. I'm not sure if uh, if that answers your question. Any more questions? Maybe from across the room now. <laughs> <laughs> um. If I uh, forget my mobile at home, yeah. um, am I able to use a website or something to unlock my latches to be able to order a notification to uh, use my access? Uh, I'm not sure. If you left your... I, I, I don't uh, have my mobile with me. Uh -huh. It's at home and I want to log into my uh, banking account. Okay. No, let let's think about it uh, in a different way. Let's suppose that you forget your... Uh, you you go to an Apple store right now and you want to buy an iPad and your credit card limit is 
uh, higher than you had set up at the beginning. What do you need to do? You need to fund your uh, bank institution, your, your bank, and provide your second factor authentication that probably is one of the number of the secret password and then the matrix of coordinates, and then you get access to the, the, sec the to increase the level of, the, of that. All security protections are, crea are created to be managed by the, the real owner of the identity. In this example, I was talking to you, the real owner is the online banking. In, in, the, in case that the on online institution were using LATS, you can phone, identify yourself, and they got a dashboard saying, OK, I'm going to unlock your, your digital account. That's all. But previously of that, you can go to any mobile phone, download the wallet, get into your wallet, and use it, because it's not tight at all to your mobile phone. So I have to um, call the uh, supporter or, or the... No, you, first of all, the, the first... The guy who's, who's using or offering the, the, the latch service to say, OK, I want to use it now. That's, you, that's, you. that's me. Sorry. Please identify myself. Yeah, OK. That's me. And then, uh, uh, and then unlock my latch. Okay. We, we, cannot, we cannot unlock any latch, because okay. then it, it would be a, a security problem. Yes, of course, but it wouldn't work with uh, Gmail. If they work with you, they wouldn't uh, probably take my call. In. I, I mean, I have no phone to call them anyway. Well, it's, it's the same. If you, if you, I'm not sure if you have set up the second factor authentication in Apple, but one of the things that Apple says in the process is once <coughs> you set up the second factor authentication, please forgive, uh, forget about to calling us to reset the, your password. If you uh, lost your password and the second token, you are lost forever. So I guess we have to stop now because the buses are leaving three minutes ago. <laughs> so please don't run now. There will be another bus. I think we have four buses or something like that. So remember, the buses will leave at the green bars on the right of the media. Thank you.